Hey, what's going on? You know what I got to talk about. <laughs> but before I do that, I'd like to thank Anonymous uh, for the donation and any other Anonymous uh, person in the future for your donation. And um, we need to keep it coming. And yes, to the No Mercy for Scammers, yes, people have donated. <laughs> so, you know, you do what you do and let me do what I'm trying to do. Uh, the one thing I'm not trying to do is scan. That's for damn sure. But anyways, I'm sure you all heard the news. The news got around. And I did not listen to Dr. Boyce's uh, full video. So I will do that in order. I should have done it before this, but I'm in a predicament right now where I'm just doing this right now. To see the details, but apparently somebody picked it apart. <laughs> it, uh... He just said Yvette had a uh, white girlfriend and Yvette Carnell obviously exposed Dr. Boyce for being a fraud. And as you know, first of all, there are people on both sides of the argument making excuses for both of them, which is funny. It goes to show that these people must be down with them or people don't like, you know, realizing that, man, I've been conned. A lot of people don't like, like facing those facts, man. But as you know, and you can check the timestamp video, I called these people out a long time ago. Because like I say, I analyze these people. I don't just uh, talk junk. I keep telling people that. You know, once I see what their angle is, that's when I say, okay, this is what it's all about. And when I don't see them... When I see them getting money and then I don't see them actually doing anything or bragging about doing anything for black people, then you know what the deal is. I mean, like I always say with the Tariq Nasheed, he has money. He brags about his money and his mansions. All these guys do that, if you notice. They throw it in your face, man, whether it's an S-Class or a mansion or what have you. And, and somebody keeps, and people like Tariq Nashi, they keep talking about, well, I threw money here, threw it there, I donate this, I pay for this funeral, that. But what did you do for black people, man? That, that, that's, that's what we need to know. And like I said before, Yvette Carnell, she already told you she's not doing nothing. But I told you her donations are obviously going towards the gay cause. And you know, she gets the donations during her show, after her show, and even after she collected maybe 500 a night. People, uh, she'll hit people up talking about go to the Breaking Brown and donate, subscribe for $2 a month, all that kind of stuff. See, they keep trying to attract you in different types of ways to pay them. That's what it's all about. And Dr. Boyce, he did say that Yvette Carnell was always unable to support herself. And she did make a video about that and said that he wasn't paying her much. So now, obviously, these donations, she's uh, able to support herself. You can uh, make 500 a night tax-free for two nights. I'm, uh, I'm surprised she didn't expand the uh, nights, which uh, I'm sure she probably would have, but now... Things uh, may not go that way. But Dr. Boyce, yeah, he's been cold busted. See, I always knew that the guy was a phony just because of what he's charging people. Like I said it in the video, he's charging black people for hopes and dreams. I mean, what he gives to black people for their money doesn't do anything for black people. And that Charles Wu guy, he said, it's hope, it's hope that he's selling. Now, the only difference to me, I knew Boyce was a coon agent, but I at least thought he was uh, doing this kind of thing on his own. Not that that makes it any better, but now you see that he's a coon agent of the Chinese man. He's an agent, direct agent, because when you represent somebody else's thing, you're an agent of that person. You know? 
And I tell you this, even like a drug dealer, if you're down with the two-time crew, I'm just making that up, you're an agent of the two-time crew. That, that automatically makes you an agent. You got to look up the word agent. You're representing someone else. So Dr. Boyce was being pimped and obviously paid. You know, <laughs> I keep telling you, you got to watch out for these people on TV. And then when they all, always get on TV and then they get their uh, financial uh, thing set up. I told you, Dr. Boyce, he, he keeps he stays on YouTube. And when he's not on YouTube, he had these others filling in just so he can keep his channel popping so he can get the AdSense money. And it's all about the money. And don't think for a minute that Yvette Cartnell... Like I said, I think the beef between them was probably fake. Maybe he didn't like the gay stuff after a while. Might be real now, but one thing that's for certain, both of them are bringing each other down, and it's kind of uh, funny. Uh, see, Yvette Carnell is just like Poppy and all these other people that come from Sardin that are in the black. You know, they get the fake beasts going and they uh, fly on their own, get people to subscribe to their channels. Then they fly on their own and get their own money. Uh, you know, that's what this is all about. So now they're having their issues and it always comes down to money, you know. And I told you people, Yvette Carnell was gay, but I put the video up, got taken down, but it's on my Facebook channel. And um, I remember when YouTube used to uh, work with uh, Facebook, but I guess they stopped doing that because they wanted to promote their own Google uh, Plus thing, which I don't know who uses it. Uh, <laughs> it's just that, you know, they kind of force you to uh, get one when you get a, a YouTube. But um, I told you Yvette Carnell was a homosexual. You know, some people said that she said it years ago, but this goes to show that, and you know, she's living in Atlanta too. I don't want to put Atlanta down, but I mean, come on. You know, I don't know if that's an Atlanta accent or a Carolina's accent. That's what it kind of sounds like, but I think she was from the Carolinas of Virginia, one of those, but you could tell she was gay because of her hairdo and, uh, her clothing and her tattoos. I mean, if you want to dismiss the hairdo and the clothing, okay, that's fine. But those tattoos, you can't dismiss because people clown with me about the, the gay research. But I, I tell you, man, I research these people. I don't just talk about my research. And lesbians, dyke lesbians, they, they like these tattoos, man. They like trying to be men. So I want today uh, in, in a 7-Eleven. She had a rainbow hat on. Black lady. Dark skin. And I said, damn. They're all over the place. So the funny part is boy said that she had a white girlfriend. Here these white people do again. They see me in the car. <laughs> First they park. They about to leave. And then go in their house and then they come back oh I forgot something and they leave out of here <laughs> could have been they didn't even go to their house just in case you're wondering they went in the door and then they came right back out could it It could be real or it could be well I see that nigga in the car nah man even though there's a Porsche to my right <laughs> and a nice Jeep to my left and they're driving a Volkswagen but they think and, and there's a uh, Infinity right over there and they think their car is more important. Anyways, Boyce called her, called her out on her white girlfriend, which means that he knew that she was gay. Some people say, Who can, what difference does it make if somebody's gay? But I keep trying to tell you, when you are a homosexual, just like when you're a crack addict, that is who you are. That is your main function in life. Some people can't believe it, but that's the case. It's just like if you're a heterosexual sex fiend, that's your main function in life, to keep on getting what you can get. If you're a drug dealer, your, your main function in life is to keep on getting as much money as you can get. 
Now, but sex is attached to your body. You know, you can't get rid of that unless you get castrated or take some hormones uh, in the opposite direction. So that is who she is. And the fact that she has a white woman, if what boy says is true, you know, that backs up what, what, what I'm saying. So here's the main thing. It makes her see, even if she was not gay and she had a white man, she would still be a hypocrite. Why? Because when I criticized her or evaluated her, black people said her information is powerful. She has the stats. She's helping black people with information. But now that you know that who she goes home to is a white woman, then and, and she and like Tariq Nashi, she can't put her on uh, on on the video. But everybody else on the video, but she can't put her white woman on the video. That makes her a supreme hypocrite. And some people say, hey, what difference does it make who you go home to? You can still be a pro-black. Like I always say, you can't be pro-black and have a white spouse. You, you just can't do that. Because the number one, if you're pro-black and you love black people, the first thing you want to do is recreate or create more black people. But obviously being a homosexual, she can't even do that. But it goes who she prefers. Some people say, oh, you can't help who you fall in love, love with. Yes, yes, you can. Because you spot and seek out who you're attracted to. You can, ha you know, there are, most people are attracted to people for sex. You know, and, and in the gay world, you know, I'm, <laughs> some people may not like what I'm, I'm saying, but I don't care. In the gay world, it's about whoever the hell they want want to get down with to be honest with you they just get down with anybody to be honest with you and um in the gay world man the fact that she chose a white woman not that i would feel good if she chose a black woman because the fact that she's a homosexual and talking all this pro-black stuff like she cares about black people see that puts her in a different box because she's not true to black people. And now that she has a white girlfriend, that's even worse. <laughs> because now we know, like I told you, all the donations she gets is going towards a homo agenda. And now it's going toward a white agenda, white homo agenda. And I told you before uh, that black homos are controlled by white homos. That and, and, and they're not pro-black. They put their homosexuality before their people. I keep telling people time and time again. That's what they do. They can't break away from it because being homosexual is what defines them. Even though gays will swear up and down, they say, oh, being a homosexual, that's not what defines me. But it does. As you can see with homos like uh, Yvette Carnell. The hairdo, the clothes, the tattoos. Bruce Jenner. You see the getup he wears. I mean, you can't tell me that doesn't define him. I mean, <laughs> and, and a whole bunch of other weirdos. You know, they they uh, their homosex uh, desires that defines them. Like I said before, they wake up every morning and they say, "I want some homosex." That's what they do. Some people might laugh and say, nah, that can't be the case. But if you're a heterosexual, that is a normal person, you think about what you wake up to thinking about when it comes to your sex life. You think about, I'm single, but when I used to, as some people might say, shack up with somebody, I know how it was when I used to wake up to women. You know, it was always sex going on because you're, they're right there. So, so if she lives with her woman, you know what's going on. And I keep telling you about the teeth. People think I'm joking, but the translucent uh, teeth, the uh, what's uh, some grayish activity that is indicative of bi biological substances going into the mouth and on the teeth. 
<laughs> people laugh, but I've been observing this stuff since I was a child. And when you run into a woman, now obviously there are always exceptions to every rule, but when you run into a woman who likes giving head, so to speak, this is what you're going to get, especially when they swallow. Some women give head and they don't want to swallow. You know, others do. And of course, with lesbians, you know, that's really all they can do is give head in their kind of way. So, you know, biological substances are going in the mouth and on the teeth because that's their primary way of having sex, as they call it. You know, like I said, I analyze stuff deep. I don't just look at the surface, man. So, again, Yvette Carnell, Dr. Boyce, their beef is uh, coming to a head. And, and they're affecting each other's money. And you know, when people start affecting each other's money, people get mean over their green, you know? Obviously, Dr. Boyce has more money than Yvette, presumably. Yvette is getting her, her church money going so to speak <laughs> but see she tried to suppress and stay away from the homosexual issues now I will admit I trolled her uh, live uh, feeds every now and then <laughs> I think she knew it was me and I would say things like uh, Yvette why don't you do a show on, uh, on, on some homos in the black community so we can know about that world I think that's a valid show for her to do since she is a homo, but obviously she doesn't want to uh, stress that because homos like to make you think that there's nothing wrong with being gay. It's just another normal way of life. Like I said, if it were normal, it wouldn't be so difficult for homosexuals to pull off what they're pulling off. You know, the men, they need anal lube. I don't know what the hell they used back in the uh, Greek days <laughs> for anal lube. Unless it was, you know, some olive oil or something. I don't know what the hell they use. Or even how the hell they thought, man, uh, this can work this way. But clearly they use something. <laughs> but the men need anal lube. The females, you know, it's hard to scissor. I mean, I, I yeah, I have watched the videos. It's, it's, it, I see a lot of... Uh, energy being wasted for them <laughs> to try and uh, do what they do you know these bodies when you think about it they were designed for opposites i mean it's pretty simple i mean it wasn't designed for same sex that's why they you know the the creators made it pretty difficult to pull off any other type of operation you know two men you got they got their penises out hard i mean what can they do when they're facing each other, you know, <laughs> there's nothing that can be done. You know, that's why they suck each other's penises and, and, and get into to each other's butts. And the homosexuals, they go in the opposite. They do everything possible to not be normal, to do what they're supposed to do. You know, it's a weird lifestyle, man. But, uh, you know, I, I think castration is the best way. That way they can live on and, and use their talents in society. But, you know, all the bad things that go along with the gayness, you know, that could be cut out. Including uh, child rape, prison rapes. Matter of fact, anybody who disagrees, I, I think this, man. Anybody gets raped in prison, the rapist should get castrated. You know, they, they got... Pr That's funny how uh, when you go to prison... Other criminals say, hey, you know what? This guy is in here for rape, child abuse. We're going to deal with this guy. Even though I think it's just an excuse just to uh, have some homosexual uh, rape going on. So raping men who raped others, that's supposed to be prison justice. But these homos that rape in prison, nobody does anything about them. Come on. I wouldn't doubt if a lot of gay people keep going to prison just <laughs> so they can uh, experience that lifestyle. But, um, so these guys, man, they, they, they're going head up with each other. 
that she has taken shots at this guy quite a while for quite some time now. So, you know, I can't say that and he's taking shots back, some subliminal, some direct. But now I guess he's going all out. So she's uh, going all out. This happens. <laughs> but see, Dr. Boyce is supposed to be sophisticated and professional. But he's been trying to act ghetto to appeal to a certain crowd. That same crowd Tariq Nasheed and uh, Umar Johnson appeal to. Which uh, some people say is the lower income blacks. But Dr. Boyce was able to appeal to more educated blacks at first. But, you know, I don't know where his audience is with that. And he always had that African lady on. Which, of course, I dismiss these people talking about us. You know, they got to deal with their own people. But now we see and somebody said that I'm, I'm glad I just remembered this. I'm freestyling. Uh, Dr. Boyce's daughter married a white man. It, it, somebody said so. <laughs> he's a hypocrite in that regard too that's the kind of thing you would discourage even though interracial relationships are um, more I, I'll accept those before homosexual stuff because at least with interracial relationships people are doing the right thing and I believe I said that before you know there's nothing positive about homosexual stuff nothing and See, I explain what I say. I don't just talk it, you know, because you got a lot of sensitive people out here. As soon as you say something that they don't like, then um, they get mad. They say, oh, you're hating. This guy's a hater. They don't like what you say. Because like they say, the truth hurts. But they said his daughter married a white man. So that makes him a hypocrite, just like uh, <laughs> he's at Carnell with her uh, gay lover. I'm kind of curious to see what a gay lover looks like. Shit, sure, I'm sure when they're both naked, they both are looking white next to each other. Um, But that's who she's loving, man. Like a lot of uh, uh coon agents back in the days, Danny Glover. I remember him used to get into all this pro-black stuff. I said, okay, this man, this man is down with it. Charles, well, not Charles, Barkley. He wasn't, he was talking a lot about black stuff. You know, all the usual suspects. And then when I found out Danny Glover had a white woman, I'm like, ah, boy, I said, man, damn. I said, all these guys are doing is fighting for the white man to accept them messing with the white woman. That's all it is. See, if you truly love black people, you reproduce black people. That's the bottom line. But like I did, I said in the uh, black standard of beauty when you really analyze the facts, black people don't love being black. Black people, black people's standard of beauty. This is over the world now. The world over. It's white people. Whatever is closest to white, that's what it is. That's why black people doesn't. Now I'm talking about all black people now. <laughs> They uh, will mix with white people and they like the mixed result. Matter of fact, today I saw what, what appeared to be what some people might call a dark mulatto. He was darker than me. He had him a blonde hair, blue eyed white woman. I admit she did have a fat ass on her, though. Uh, I admit that. <laughs> but like I always say, they go with the. Uh, they usually go white. So if you're black and you have the mixed kid and they choose white, then, you know, if that was your purpose in life uh, to have your kids and your future be white, then I guess you accomplish your mission. And again, this is why I say you can't be pro black with a white spouse, because if your children are going with white people and you're not making them identify as black then uh, that's not your intent. Now, you can go get you some white people and um, reproduce, but you got to make sure it's a, a part of a mission. Like Eve, I was telling you about her. She married the white dude. Ugly, ugly dude. 
her mission is clearly money. And, you know, she's a former stripper. When you're in that stripper prostitution uh, lifestyle, you only think sex and money. Sex means I get paid. You know, you, you get conditioned to that. Yeah, she made some moves regard in regards to the money, but now the question is, what are her moves from here? Are her moves to get that money? And it goes to show the white man, he can look any kind of way. As long as he has the cash and gives you a secure lifestyle, you give up the ass. And unfortunately, that's the way it's been for thousands of years. And I'm not talking about in regards to the white man. I'm just talking about in general. With anybody who has money, they get their uh, uh, choice of sexual partners. I mean, you think about it. If you drive a Hyundai, you might get nice looking women, hoes who walk or ride the bus. But if you step up to a luxury class car, then females pay attention. You know, and the more expensive the car, the more they pay attention, the more they want to get with you. Like I told you, I, I, I experimented online to women and told them that I was about to graduate from uh, Yale Law School. And I tell you, the women, they were lining up, uh, planning our future together. Then they kept asking how it was going. Then I said, oh, it's not going well anymore. Then all of a sudden, you know, they said, oh, man, uh, I can't see you anymore. I mean, I'm, I'm just so busy now. And my bills are getting tight. I got to work hard. You know, all that kind of BS. So it goes to show, man, it's all about the money. But you have to, if you're going to mix with white people, you better make sure you're doing it as a job. Asians, when they mix with white people, they're doing it as a job. They're doing it as a come up. Black people are doing it for love and because they hate their black selves. So white people do it because they know they can control you. It might be for love, but it's usually for primal sex. I hate to say it, which can lead into love. But you still have to be on your mission. But when it comes to the homosexual stuff with the white woman, Yvette Carnell, she chose her side. She could have chosen a black woman, but she chose a white woman, according to Dr. Boyce. So where do you think her money is going? Where do you think her psyche is at? She gets on YouTube. Here's the thing. She calls her little group Breaking Brown while she's breaking white. <laughs> See, these people are hypocrites, man. She makes you feel like she's proud of being black. And me and a lot of other people jokingly, but kind of telling the truth, would say that she's a white woman. Yvette Carnell. I mean, you think about it, you take away her lips and her hair and her nose from the front. From the side, it looks like a white nose, but from the front, it looks kind of black. You take away that, give her, give her some straight hair. Hell, you could probably even keep get away with the lips if you wanted to, but give her some thin lips and straight hair, you would swear she was a white woman. But she wants to fool you into thinking she's so so into black that's why you gotta watch these so-called feminists because they're homosexuals man they try to seduce the black woman or women in general and say it's all about I, 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 black women we have to build ourselves up and all that kind of stuff but she's with a white woman so she's not with that but what they're trying to do is collect homosexuals just like in the catholic church the nuns they're homosexuals uh these feminists, they, they, they're homosexuals. And uh, people who want boy schools and all that kind of stuff, these are homosexuals. I know people are saying, what? I'm just saying. Remember that boys town? <laughs> it's always boys, man. I'm going to be honest with you, man. I, I got an interest in black Americans coming up as a group, but I'm not isolating little boys from little girls. I mean, come on. That's just me, you know? I mean, I went to a Catholic school at one point in time. I believe, 
uh, sometimes they would separate the classes. Other times they didn't, but they definitely made the females wear uh, skirts. And the men wear, well, the boys wear little suits. But um, I can't say whether that made me learn better or not, to be honest with you. And of course, the teachers were black, even though this was a white, uh, I mean, the teachers were white, even though this was a black school. Go figure. But I believe that we should teach each other. But, you know, that's another topic. Because this, this, this is already going kind of long, longer than I wanted to. But we can teach each other. But it takes a lot of money, ideas, and uh, thought. But as of now, can I say I'm happy about this uh, Dr. Boyce and Yvette? Happy. I'm not really happy. But I'll say this. I'm just satisfied that their shenanigans you know they're getting revealed because a lot of people a lot of black people don't realize man see like some people say like me with the donations I keep telling you I don't beg you or I don't pressure you from do for donations I ask you gotta ask it's just like when you ask a woman hey uh, you wanna go out get something to eat you ask. If you don't ask, you, you're not going to get it. You know? Some guys, they get scared and they're like, I'll just dream about it. You know? And maybe it'll happen. Nah, man, you can't dream. You dream. You keep dreaming. Somebody else will ask and they'll be doing. So I ask. I don't beg and I don't pressure. Pressure is like, you motherfuckers ain't giving me shit. Let's get uh, ten thousand dollars by the end of the year, thirty thousand by the end of the year. That, that's that's what we call pressure, you know, and trying to intimidate people. That's what Sanetta Umar Johnson, Tariq Nashi, that's and, and Yvette Carnell, even though she doesn't tell you an amount, but she does kind of pressure you in a slick way. Boyce Watkins, he takes your money by trying to act like he's giving you something, and some people. They claim, oh yeah, Boyce Watkins stuff worked for me. That's what they all say. <laughs> but why don't you show us how it has worked for you? And then maybe we might believe you. So I'm not happy that it came out, but I am glad that, you know, the scams are getting revealed. Slick uh, Sonnet and Tariq Nasheed is still hanging in there. And the rest of these coon agents, they, you know, again, I'm not. Some people just call it hating when I point things out. It's not hating. It's pointing them out because some people don't see it. You know. I'm trying to get to the bottom line, man. I mean, we've been talking black people in America have been talking about doing this, doing that for the last 120 years or so. If not 130, or 150 years. Some people have done. And of course, the white man shut it down. Other black people have done things. Black people help to shut it down, like these coon agents. That's why they keep your mind on Africa all the time. And this is why I keep saying, forget the Africans, forget the Caribbeans. Let's concentrate on ourselves. They're concentrating on them, themselves. So we need to worry about ourselves. Ignore them. Don't associate with them. If we get our stuff together, then we can beat them in the future. But they're like any other immigrant. They're just looking for a come up. But we think we've been brainwashed into believing, hey, man, we got to help these people out. These are our brothers and our sisters. Nah, man, don't help them out at all. They're going to do their thing. They're doing fine. They're doing better than you as a whole. So. Me, what Boyce Watkins, uh, Tariq Nasheed, all these other slicksters, I just like pointing out the BS so we can get to the bottom line so we can start getting it together. See, that's why people who don't agree with me, I don't go back and forth. I'm not trying to convince you of anything. Either you agree and we work from there 
or you don't agree. And if you don't agree, move on to the, those who you do agree with. Because obviously, because I'm not going to change uh, what I'm about. Because I've, I've already analyzed the facts and realized that we got to leave the drugs alone. And we have to get an education. There's no getting around not getting an education. But you got a lot of coons out there that keep saying, oh, man, who cares about the white man's education? But I tell you, who does care about it? Dr. Umar Johnson, Dr. Boyce Watkins, and all these other doctors, real and fake. They care about it, but they don't care enough about it to tell you to get an education. Either they don't believe that you can get one, or they don't want you to get one so they can seem like the control agent that they are. And try and lead you to wherever the hell they're trying to lead you for the white man, or in Dr. Boyce's uh, case for the uh, G uh, Chinese man. So, you know, we have to understand, we have to cut out the BS. And the BS is these people leading you on a wild goose chase while you give them money. So you give your money to the right uh, direction and then see what, you, see what comes up, see what develops out of it. And I guess that's what a lot of people are thinking. If we give money to Alquan, how do we know Alquan is going to do something? Well, once you see I have enough of it to do something with, you're going to have to trust me. The one thing I don't do, I know people don't know me, but the one thing I do not do is BS. I prefer to get to it. I prefer to get to it faster. Not taking uh, 99 years. We've seen what the other people don't do with the money when they have it. Tariq Nashi, if he is able to raise $100,000, Per documentary. Even working with a hundred thousand. Out of all the documentaries he's done. And all the fundraisers he's done. If he took a hundred G's. And did something for black people. Set up an apparatus for black people. That starts the ball rolling. I mean there are a lot of grant. Once you start things up. Then you can get a lot of government grants. Hire black people. Matter of fact, I don't even want to go too too much further. Because <laughs> next thing you know, he's going to say, oh, 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 okay. And in his next video, he's going to uh, outline my plan. <laughs> but um, that's what you do when you have access to money, which Tariq Nashi does. But, you know, I don't know how much, but. It's enough that he wants to at least brag or act like he, he's working with something. Dr. Boyce, all the money he's collected. What's going on? Nothing. 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 Umar Johnson. Nothing. He keeps telling you, oh, what's going to happen this time? It's just like that man that owes you money for the last five years. Oh, yeah, I got you this time. man. No doubt. Next Friday. Then when next Friday comes, it's the same old story. Oh, man, I got into a car accident. Damn. I got shot. You know, any, anything just to not pay. So I think everybody gets the idea. You get the message. And I'm going to go watch those videos and see, see what's up. <laughs> so I can get the full details on what they're talking about.